Hello, this is Mr Field and this is my video on calculating limiting reactants when we're working with quantities of chemicals in moles. Now before you watch this you need to make sure that you're confident with how to balance chemical equations, the basics of the mole concept and both the easier and the harder reacting masses calculations. Now in this video we are going to be looking at um, calculating the or determining the limiting reactants. We'll look at an analogy that will help us um, explore the idea of limiting reactants using an everyday example and then we'll work through some worked examples of how to do the maths of this. The reactants in a chemical reaction can be described as limiting or excess depending on the relative amounts of each reactant. The limiting reactant is the chemical reactant that will run out first and any reactant that will not run out is described as excess or being present in excess. So for example if we look at the reaction of ethene and water to make ethanol, which looks like this, C2H4 plus H2O, making C2H5OH. If we had one mole of C2H4 and five moles of water, the, uh, the ethene would run out first and there'd be plenty of water left over. So we can describe the ethene as being limiting and the water as being present in excess. Now, importantly, if we want to increase the amount of product, the only way to do this is to increase the amount of the limiting reactant. You know, if I added more water to this reaction, because there's already more than enough water, adding more won't make any difference. Whereas if I add ethene now, that will make a difference because I'll be able to use up some of that excess water that we've already added. Now, to help us understand the maths of limiting reactants, it's worth thinking about an analogy. And in this analogy, we're going to imagine a reaction to make a bike. And in this reaction, we're going to say that one frame and two wheels react together to make one bike. Okay. So my question to you is, how many bikes could you make if you had 10 frames and 10 wheels? Now, if you have a little think about that, you'll probably come to the conclusion that you can make five bikes. Now, the logic of that is, is completely sound, but we need to be able to actually do this formally with some mathematics. So what we need to do is work out how many bikes could we make just using our frames and how many bikes could we make just based on the wheels and whichever answer is the smallest will be the total number of bikes that we can make. So if we look at the frames first, we've got 10 frames. We need one frame for each bike. So if we do 10 divided by one, that means we've got enough frames to make 10 bikes. If we do the same with the wheels, we've got 10 wheels. We need two wheels to make a bike. So we do 10 divided by two. And that tells us we've got enough wheels to only make five bikes. Now, because five is the smallest of those two answers, that tells us that we only have enough components to make five bikes in total. To use our language from the previous slide, we can say that the wheels, in this case, are the limiting reactant and the frames are present in excess. We've got more frames than we can use. What about a second example? What about if we had 10 frames and 30 wheels? Now, again, if you just think it through with a bit of logic, you probably realize that now we can make 10 bikes. But let's do that maths again. So for the frames, we do 10 divided by one, which gives us enough frames to make 10 bikes. And if we look at the wheels, we do 30 divided by two, because there are two wheels in each bike, and that gives us 15. So we've got enough wheels to make 15 bikes, but only enough frames to make 10 bikes, and so therefore 10 bikes is all we can make. Um, so again, in this case, the frames are the limiting reactant, they're the one that runs out first, and the wheels are present in excess. What about this? What could we do in order to increase the number of bikes that you could make? Well, in the first example, adding more frames won't make any difference because we've already got more than enough frames. So the only way to get more bikes in the first example would be to add more wheels. And equally, in the second one, we've already got more wheels than we can use. So we need to increase the number of frames. So the only way to increase the number of bikes we make in the second one is to add more frames. Okay. Now, this analogy works really well. Um, you're not going to see a chemical reaction that says frames and wheels making bikes, but you will have you know, a balanced symbol equation with different coefficients, different numbers of each of the reactants and different numbers of moles. And we're going to use the exact same maths to help us work out what the limiting and excess reactants are. So how do we determine the limiting reactant? Well, it's going to work very similarly to the analogy you just saw. So what we'll do is we'll divide the quantities in moles of each reactant 
by their coefficient in the balanced chemical equation. Remember, the coefficient is the big numbers that are in front of each of the substances in the equation. Now, when we do this, the smallest answer is the limiting reactant. And really what we've done in finding that smallest answer is we found the number of moles of the reaction that can actually take place. So if we look at an example, um, let's say we've got one N2 reacting with three H2s, three hydrogens, to make two ammonias, two NH3s. Now let's imagine we started with three moles of nitrogen and six moles of hydrogen. Which one is our limiting reactant? Well, we have to divide each of the quantities in moles by their coefficient from the equation. So for the nitrogen, the quantity in moles is, uh, so the number of the coefficient is one. So we do three divided by one to give us three. And for the hydrogen, the coefficient is three. So we do six moles divided by three to give us two. And so what we found out there is that the limiting reactant is the hydrogen because it has the smallest number and the excess reactant is the nitrogen because the number is bigger. Also, what we found out is that we've got enough um, hydrogen to do two moles of the reaction. So then the last thing to do is to find out how many moles of ammonia we could make. Um, and to do that, what we'll do is we'll multiply the moles of the reaction by the coefficient of the product. Now, in this case, the coefficient of the product is two. So if we do this two moles multiplied by that two, we end up finding that we can make four moles of our product. Now, this is very, very similar to the maths of that analogy that we just looked at. It's just using chemicals, but the mathematical principle is the same thing. OK, so let's look at our first worked example. So we're going to need to determine the limiting reactant and the quantity of NaCl that is formed. Um, now, to do this, we will divide the number of moles of each reactant by the coefficient. Then we'll find the number of moles of the reaction that can take place by looking for the smallest answer. And then we'll multiply that um, by the product coefficient to find the number of moles of the product that can form. So let's have a look. So we've got one sodium hydroxide reacting with one HCl to make one NaCl and one water. And we're starting with three moles of the sodium hydroxide, NaOH, but only two moles of the HCl. So let's do our first step. We're going to divide both of those numbers of moles by the coefficient in the equation. So for NaOH, we can do three divided by one. It's divided by one because there's no number there, um, which means there's only one NaOH. So three divided by one equals three. And on the other side, we're going to do two divided by, again, one because there's no number there. And that gives us two. So this means we have enough NaOH to do three moles of the reaction, but only enough HCl to do two moles. Two is the smallest answer. Therefore, we can say that the limiting reactant is the HCl. OK, so we've done that step. We've done this step. Now the last thing to do is to find the number of moles of water that can be formed. So we're going to say number of moles, N of H2O, is going to be equal to the moles of the reaction, which is that two we just found out, multiplied by the one H2O that's in the equation. And that is going to give us two moles of um, H2O that we end up forming. OK, example two, a little bit harder this time. Determine the limiting reactant and the quantity of H2O formed in moles from this equation. So we've got two O2s reacting with one CH4 to make one CO2 and two H2Os. And we're starting with six moles of the oxygen and four moles of the methane, the CH4. So our first step is to divide the number of moles of each reactant by its coefficient. So for the oxygen, we're going to do six divided by that two there. And that gives us an answer of three. And for the methane, we're going to do the four moles divided by one because there's no number. And that gives us an answer of four. So that's our first step done. So to find the number of moles of the reaction that we can complete, it's the smallest answer, which is the three. So therefore, we can do three moles of the reaction. And that also tells us that the O2 is the limiting reactant because it's got the smallest answer. So we say limiting equals O2. The last thing to do then is to multiply the reaction moles by the product coefficient. And that will help us find out how much water we've made. So we can say the number of moles of H2O, that's what we're trying to find, 
is equal to the num number of moles of the reaction, which is that 3, multiplied by the coefficient for the water, which is that big 2 there. And that gives us an answer of 6 moles of water that we can make from this reaction. Example 3. Determine the limiting reactant and the quantity of aluminium chloride, AlCl3, that is formed in moles. So in the equation here, I've got two aluminiums reacting with three chlorines to make two aluminium chlorides. And we're going to take the same approach. So the first step is to divide the number of moles of each reactant by the coefficient uh, in the equation. So in the case of aluminium, I do 1.5 divided by 2 to give me 0.75. So I've got enough aluminium for 0.75 moles of the reaction. And for the Cl2, I'll do the same thing. I'll do the 2.4 moles divided by the coefficient of 3 to give me 0.8. So there's enough chlorine to do 0.8 moles of the reaction, but only enough aluminium to do 0.75. Therefore, that's the smallest answer. And my limiting reactant equals the aluminium. That's what will run out first. Now, to determine the number of moles of aluminium chloride, all I'll do, same as before, is I'll say number of moles of AlCl3, AlCl3, um, equals the number of moles of the reaction, which is 0.75, multiplied by the coefficient for aluminium chloride, which is 2, and that will give me an answer of 1.5 moles of aluminium as the total amount of AlCl3 that I can make. Example 4, determine the limiting reactant and the quantity of Fe formed in moles. So again, let's look at the equation. We've got 2 Fe2O3 reacting with 3 Cs to make 4 Fe's and 3 CO2's. So let's divide the number of moles of each reactant by its coefficient, first of all. So for the Fe2O3, that is going to be 0.5 divided by the coefficient of 2. And that's going to give me 0.25. And for the carbon, it's going to be 0.6 divided by its coefficient, which is 3. And that would give me 0.3. So I've got enough Fe2O3 for 0.25 moles of the reaction and enough carbon for 0.3 moles of the reaction. So the 0.25 is smallest. Therefore, we can say the limiting reactant is the um, Fe2O3. So that is our first two steps done. And our last step then, to find the number of moles of Fe that I'm going to form. I'm going to say the number of moles of Fe equals the number of moles of the reaction, which in this case was that 0.25, that smallest answer, multiplied by the coefficient of 4 there. And that's going to give me an answer of 1 mole of Fe that I can make in this reaction. OK, now for the fifth and final example. Determine the limiting reactant and the quantity of H2O formed in moles from this equation, where we have two C2H6s reacting with seven O2s to make four CO2s and six H2Os. Now, we're starting with 0.5 moles of the C2H6 and 1.4 moles of the water. So let's start by dividing each of those by the coefficient. So for the C2H6, we'll do 0.5 divided by the coefficient of 2 give us 0.25 and for the oxygen we'll do 1.4 divided by the coefficient of 7 to give me uh, 0.2 so I've got enough C2H6 to do 0.25 moles of the reaction but only enough oxygen to do 0.2 moles of the reaction that's the smallest answer so therefore we can say that the limiting reactant is our O2. So now, how many moles of H2O do I make? Well, same as always, I'm going to say the number of moles of H2O equals the number of moles of the reaction, which in this case is 0.2, multiplied by the coefficient for the water, which is 6, and that will give me a final answer of 1.2 moles of water that I can make. Okay, so that's it, the end, as always. Thank you for listening and well done if you got this far.